Hello, everyone. Welcome to the International Accepted Student Webinar. My name is Courtney, and I am the Senior Assistant Director of Admissions here at the college. And once again, I just want to say congratulations on being accepted. Um, I am so thrilled to be able to host this webinar and to allow you the opportunity to learn a little bit more about Emmanuel College and to hear from one of our international ex uh, students named Camila. Um, you know, as an international student, I understand you probably don't have the opportunity to visit all of the campuses that you're interested in looking at and potentially enrolling in. So I'm hopeful that this in this webinar will provide you with the opportunity to learn a little bit more about what kind of support services we can offer you as an international student here, as well as what is Emmanuel College like and what are the benefits that we offer our students. So what we will be going over today are the kind of support services that our international students will receive as well as how we can help you grow academically as well as personally and professionally. And that's through our commitment to your learning, which is through internships as well as research. Lastly, I do want to talk a little bit about our culture at Emmanuel, but of course I have Camila here and she is the one who's a living, breathing student. She's going through all of the things that you're going to potentially be going through as a student if you choose Emmanuel College in the fall of 2016. So let's get started. What kind of support services do we have to offer you as an international student? The one thing I really want to highlight is our academic advising program. It's actually an award-winning program and basically what happens is every international student and every student for that matter who comes to Emmanuel will have a, an academic advisor meet with them at least two times in their freshman year individually. And then you will have the opportunity to meet with our academic advisor as a part of a group at least twice. Remember, Emmanuel College is a small school. We only have a little over 1,800 students, and we like it like that because we want our students to really feel as though they're a part of a community and to be a part of an active learning experience. So our academic advisors are here to guide and support you every step of the way. And how they do that is creating what I like to call a four-year plan. So our students may want to be a biology major, may want to minor in performing arts. Maybe our students want to do study abroad. I know Camila is actually planning on studying abroad next year, which is really exciting. Um, and maybe you want to do community service. Maybe you want a double major. Maybe you have no idea what you want to do. Don't worry. Half of our students come in undecided, and that's the beauty of going to a liberal arts and sciences college. You're going to come to a manual and have over 50 areas of academic study available to you. So our academic advisors are going to meet with you at orientation and provide you with a four-year plan based off of everything you tell them you want in your experience. We want you to be able to do everything you want to do while you're here at Emmanuel, but then we want you to go off and be successful somewhere else. So our academic advisors are going to meet with you from the very start. And then once you do declare your major, the second semester of your sophomore year, you'll then have a faculty advisor. I know a lot of advising is going on here. In addition to the advising, you know, Emmanuel College is a place where you can grow as well. So we also want you to get involved in the community and we're a college that is really focused on things like community service. In fact, we, our students have completed over 40,000 hours in community service last year. So if that's something that resonates with who you are as a person, or maybe you haven't had the opportunity to get involved yet, but you're thinking, college is the time I'm gonna do that, we have a number of opportunities for you to do that. And you can go meet with your advisor and campus ministry if you'd like to maybe work and volunteer at a homeless shelter, if you wanted to volunteer on our campus, if you wanted to go out and work for a food pantry, maybe you want to clean up the city. I know Alternative Spring Break is actually coming up next week. And a lot of our students are actually meeting uh, up with all different people from um, different areas, including places like Arizona. If you had that uh, thought in your mind, we could certainly help you uh, provide some uh, assistance to uh, people who are maybe living and, and don't have as many opportunities as you have here in the city of Boston. 
So in addition to academic advising, in addition to things like community service, we also have the ARC Resource Center, which is a fabulous center that is there to support all of your needs as an academic student. So for you, you know, especially as an international student, something I hear a lot is your concern over the English proficiency. I know you all had to take either the TOEFL or the IELTS, and you all did wonderful, so congratulations. But there still might be some concern, maybe I'm not you know, going to be successful in the United States when I start taking classes all in English. Maybe the writing is going to be too hard. Well, we have a writing specialist for our students. It's not a peer tutor, it's someone who's a professional that we have hired, and that person is there to help you maybe outline your paper, they're there to edit your paper with you, to help create your paper, um, you know, help just with the brainstorming process. And then our uh, writing specialists are also the ones leading workshops, so they can assist you with that too. In addition to writing, we also have a professional math specialist. I know there are many of you sitting at home, especially those who had a Skype interview with me and said that calculus was not your favorite subject, you're not strong in the math, that's perfectly fine. I know many students aren't. In fact, Camila is over here raising her hand saying she's not very strong in the math either, the math discipline. So we have a math specialist to assist you with that, uh, with that area of difficulty. In addition to our writing specialist and our math specialist, we also have peer tutors. So maybe you're not the greatest in math, but you're really strong in science. You could be a science tutor and still use the ARC Resource Center for all of the other needs that you have. So we're there and we're there to assist you. The students that are doing really well at Emmanuel are the ones that understand they have an area that needs a little bit of development. And they come to the ARC Resource Center and they take advantage of all of the free resources that we have on our campus to help them develop and grow academically. So in addition to those two services, we do have peer tutors, like I mentioned. In addition, we also hold workshops, so you can certainly take a look at the schedule of events, see what kind of workshops that might interest you. For students that are coming to the United States for the first time, I know some of you out there are a little nervous about the difference in, in how to study in the United States education system. We also offer what's called ARC 0101, which is a resource, um, and it's a wonderful seminar basic Basically, it's a seminar course. It's a four to five week course, and it's free. And it is led by one of our staff members. Our students take advantage of this all the time. And it really helps with things like time management. Maybe you're not really sure how to study properly for a college level exam. Maybe you need a little help in figuring out when you should start writing that midterm paper or that final essay. So our resource, the ARC 0101 seminar course, is designed with students just like you in mind to help you with the transition from high school, whether it's in the United States or abroad, into college. So in addition to the ARC 0101 course, we are also here to really help our students prepare for the next level. Maybe you're a student thinking, I want to go on and go into medical school. Maybe you're thinking, I want to go on to business school because my parents own a business back home and I want to go back home and take over and help them grow the industry. So in the ARC Center, we're also there to provide graduate preparation. Some students, I know one of our students, um, Kinda, who's from Syria, she's actually preparing to take the LSAT exam, which is the board exam you have to take for law school. So our uh, ARC Center can assist students with things like the LSAT, the MCAT for medical school, the GRE for business school, as well as maybe identifying what graduate programs might be a good fit for you. The our ARC Resource Center can also help you figure out how to start the application process. So in addition to the ARC Resource Center, our faculty are there to help you as well. I mentioned you have an academic advisor from the beginning at orientation. You're also going to have a faculty advisor, as I mentioned. So students interested in going on to medical school, law school, veterinarian school, dental school, you'll also have an advisor for the pre-med program or the pre-dental program or the pre-law program. So there's a lot of support when it comes to helping you again, grow as an academic student, but also go to the next level in your career. And a lot of our students take advantage of the small class sizes. Remember, we have a 14 to one student faculty ratio. 
we have approximately 1,800 students on our campus, and our class sizes are usually around 20 to 21. So Emmanuel is the kind of environment that you're going to enter into where you can't hide. You certainly can't just blend into the crowd. We expect you to be an active participant in your learning, and we, we value that, and we value everything that you have to offer to the classroom. And our faculty, our academic advisors, and our uh, faculty advisors are there to guide you every step of the way, whether that's medical school, whether that's going on to another graduate program. Maybe you just want to go back home and you want to help your family, or you want to uh, find employment back home as well in another area or industry. We can certainly assist you whatever your goal is. So that will bring me to career services, a really important aspect of the college. Career services is a resource on campus. They hold uh, different fairs for different job opportunities. They hold internship fairs, which is one of the major benefits that students who study in a manual have at their fingertips. You will be studying in one of the best cities in the country. And of course, I'm biased because I'm from Boston. I'm a Boston native. But I have to say, you're studying in a world-renowned city. Not only is it a college city, but it's also a place where, for business, it's one of the top five cities in the country. And so our career services department has developed relationships with organizations from around the city. So we have students studying all over the place. In fact, Emmanuel sits five minutes walking distance from the Longwood Medical Center, which houses some of the most prestigious hospitals in the country. So for any of you science students, you're looking at the potential internship at Boston Children's Hospital, Brigham and Women Hospital, Beth Israel Hospital, which I happen to know that one of our current student ambassadors, Darren, is interning there now, and a, an array of other institutions and hospitals. In fact, I do know that we have one of our international students, Sao Ling. Um, he's from Cambodia, and he does a number of internships. Um, he has interned as a tax audit um, analyst, and he's really developed himself professionally and has built a number of wonderful networking opportunities uh, for our for him and for his career. I also know he's interned with the state representative, Timothy Toomey. Um, so he's actually worked in the Office of State Representatives, which is an amazing opportunity for him and for any international student because you have the opportunity to learn about our political system as well as the political system for you back home. Uh, I have another international student I know of. His name is Shane, and he's from Singapore. And he's actually worked for the Grand Hyatt Hotel in Sydney. Me. Um, over there, he was a revenue management analyst, and he's just loving the opportunity to be connected with all of these wonderful professional organizations. We have students interning at places like KPMG Accounting, one of the top accounting firms in the country. If any of you are Red Sox fans, we do have students interning at the Red Sox, and again, they're only a seven minute walk away from our campus. So it's pretty simple to get involved with them. And of course, Fenway Park is a very popular uh, venue as well. Uh, we do have sports management as a concentration. So any business students out there maybe thinking sports could be an option for them, check out the Red Sox. Um, we also have students interning at the State House. We've had students intern at the uh, New Balance Company. If any of you are uh, wearing New Balance sneakers right now, you could be interning there next year. So there are lots of internship opportunities at Emanuel. That's one thing to really take home with you is, if I'm going to study in the United States, what will the opportunities be for me? How will I build myself professionally? What kind of network and networking opportunities and professional contacts can I build? And being in the city of Boston, in the middle of Boston, that's what we have to offer you. So in addition to the Career Services Department helping you find an internship, they're also there to help with your interview skills because for some of you, this may be your first interview and it's it's scary, it's intimidating. So what, what can you expect? What kinds of questions will there be? They'll also help you with your resume. I know one of our international students just approached me a few days ago and said she's never built a resume, has no idea how this works, and you know is a little bit nervous. And I directed her to the Career Services Department because they are a wonderful resource uh, and they can that's their job. That's, that's why they're here, to help you get to the next level. 
In addition, I mentioned they hold those fairs for uh, different internship opportunities, but they also hold job fairs. So as a junior, as a senior, you put on what you know your your best suit. You go to the job fair with your newly designed resume, and then you go walk up to an employer who's looking to hire someone that day, potentially. Um, so there's those kinds of opportunities for you as well. So the internships up, the internship opportunities, the job opportunities, coupled with our career services department, is really something that can help take you to the next step. Another learning opportunity, a learning experiential opportunity, is research. It happens here at Emmanuel College. It's something that we're really well known for. I know you, those students sitting at home might be thinking, gee, I'm not really a science student. I'm probably not going to be doing research. Think again. We have students in psychology doing research. In fact, one of our international students, Wee Chen, she's, I believe she's from Vietnam, she is working with one of our psychology professors on campus doing research. We have students working at Beth Israel doing research. We have students, one of my favorite research uh, projects that one of our students is working on is studying the chemical makeup of ink tattoos. So it's very modern. We also have students researching in the mathematics department as well as in the economics department. Our English department is really dedicated to helping students become published before they graduate as well. If you're researching on our campus or with one of our faculties who have labs in those hospitals I mentioned earlier, you have the potential to be published in a peer-reviewed journal before you graduate. You could also be presenting at a national conference. You could also be presenting at a regional conference. Emmanuel, one of the best, one of the best things about Emmanuel is that we are here to help you get involved and get your feet wet and, and help you actually apply what you're learning from the classroom to the industry. In fact, we are actually, we were named recently by the U.S. Department of Education as a top U.S. Fulbright Scholar program. So we send U.S. students abroad and we send faculty abroad for their, for their research. We've been awarded a number of grants. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the grants. I know one of them is the research grant that we've been awarded from the National Science Foundation. We've been awarded grants for our faculty to research with the National Institute of Health. So the college is, is definitely an organization that promotes research, that promotes studying, promotes scholarly activity. Think about all of these kinds of things that you can build while you're here. You're coming to Emmanuel to grow academically, and you're also coming to grow professionally. Because at the end of your four years, your parents are going to sit there and say, what can you do with this degree from the United States? And then think about all of the things that you'll be able to show them. Research, internships, the possibility of being published before graduation amazing opportunities, and it's all right in the middle of the city at Emmanuel. I think at this point, what I'd like to do is jump into our culture at Emmanuel, because in addition to the support services that we offer our students, we also offer an array of activities to get involved in, because yes, you're coming to study at Emmanuel, but we also want you to get involved. In fact, Emmanuel was named for the fourth year in a row the most school-spirited college in the city of Boston. So I can tell you, if you are not school-spirited now, you're going to be school-spirited at some point while you're here at Emanuel. The college is situated in the middle of the city of Boston. I've said that multiple times. It's hard for students who have never been to Boston to understand what that means. But think of it in this way. Boston is an urban location. It has a number of resources available to you. But Emanuel is a suburban-feeling campus we have grass, we have trees, we have a beautiful quad which you can look at on our website. So if you imagine a suburban campus centered in the middle of a world-renowned city, that's what Emmanuel offers. We have residence halls available to our students all four years. In fact, I know one of our students asked that question um, earlier. Can you let me know, can I live on campus? And as an international student, you are welcome to live on campus. We want you to live on campus. In fact, over 98% of our students choose to live on campus during their freshman year. So that's one of the best benefits of, of going to Emmanuel is that you have the opportunity to be in a, this traditional suburban campus, but yet you're still in the middle of the city with all of these benefits available to you. In addition to our campus, 
I mentioned our community service piece. Our students are so focused on our mission, which is to provide others who are less fortunate with opportunities and more advantage. We are definitely committed to social injustice and inequality. Um, and so that's something that our students are really focused on and very much committed to. In fact, tomorrow night, we have a very popular uh, fundraiser called EC Dancing with the Stars. So some of our dance team members pair up with some faculty and staff and uh, basically raise money for Boston Children Hospital. And over the past few years, it has exploded into one of the most popular events on campus. Personally, I'm looking forward to it. I have been for a while. And what I think is great is that it's a fun event to go to. It brings all the students together, but it's also for a wonderful cause. It's raising money for children who are in need of, of care and are going to Boston Children's Hospital for various reasons. So that's one example of some of the events we have on, on campus. Of course, Camila will talk more about maybe her favorite event that she goes to. Uh, but we have over 90 different clubs and organizations on campus. So there's certainly not, it, it's not a campus where you're going to feel that there's nothing to do. There's always something to do. There's always somewhere to go. Um, you know, and this location itself, you have, a number of, of world-class museums right in the area, some of which you have free admission to. The Museum of Fine Arts is right next door to us, and you can go there at any time for free. In fact, any of you art students may actually have classes at the Museum of Fine Arts. So some of our students also enjoy the Museum of Science. Personally, that's one of my favorites because I really like hands-on activities. And then the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum is a, is a favorite, as well as the uh, Museum of Contemporary Art. But you also have, as I mentioned, Fenway Park, where the Red Sox play. We have a movie theater across the street. And then, of course, Boston is, is also well known for its culture. I mean, Boston is a college city. You have over 100,000 college students studying here from all over the world, just like you. So you have the opportunity to meet so many different people from different parts of the world. It's really a melting pot. In addition, Emmanuel is a part of a consortium called the Colleges of the Fenway. So students can actually cross-register and take classes at five other colleges right in the vicinity here at Emmanuel. So for you, what that means is that you don't have to sacrifice the small class sizes, the traditional campus that you're looking for, but you also don't have to sacrifice being a part of a larger university feel, having the resources of a larger university. Our students can access the study abroad database and have over 700 programs to choose from with over 70 different countries. You can also cross register and have over 2400 classes available to you in addition to what Emmanuel has to offer. We also have the COF clubs. So if you're an intramural sport player, you can join the intramural COF program and meet students that way. So the benefits of going to a college that has a consortium is numerous and you know, it's a, it's a great opportunity that I would highly encourage all students to take advantage of while they're here on our campus. In addition, Emmanuel is a very scholarly school, as I mentioned. We do have the research. We also have the internships. But we also have 15 academic honor societies here. And we have an honors program. So at some point, if you're interested in learning more about those opportunities, please let me know. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have regarding all of the information we mentioned tonight. At this point, I think I'd like to introduce Camila, our international student, and she's going to come over and talk with us a little bit about what life is like being here at Emmanuel. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. So, Camila, what I think I would like you to do is let everyone who's watching know maybe what year in school you are, what's your major, and maybe a fun fact, right? That's always fun to hear. <laughs> I'm a sophomore at Emmanuel. I'm studying sociology with a concentration in criminal justice. And a fun fact. It's always a hard one to think about. <laughs> um, I don't know, maybe a school-related one. I applied to 20 colleges, so I was as confused as you are right now. Yeah, 20. Wow! <laughs> I hope none of you at home have 20 colleges on your list. That's, that's a lot. <laughs> But I'm so glad that you chose Emmanuel. Yep. <laughs> In fact, one of our international students asked, why did you choose to study here at Emmanuel College? So many reasons. Um, mostly because mostly it was so small. That was my favorite part. It was so small, but you're in the middle of a city, so you're not like out in the suburbs where you have like a diner in front and like 
a supermarket like 20 minutes away. So you're in the middle of the city. There's so much going on. And then Emmanuel is so small. So like you get to know your professors. And I knew I was going to like that. Cause I can't, I went for, to a, a small high school. So I wasn't used to like huge classes and everything it had to offer like research and internships. Cause we have to graduate with an internship. So that was great. Cause it like forces you to like go outside, um, get a job before, before you graduate, get experience, build up a resume. So I really like that. Excellent. And you're from Costa Rica. Yes. Right. Yes. Excellent. I know we have a lot of students from Central and South America, so you may even recognize Camila. <laughs> <Yeah>. So <laughs> I know it's a little scary <laughs> to think about. So um, another one of our students asked if you could describe maybe what your favorite thing to do on campus is. If there's a favorite social activity or or favorite event that happens every year. Um, I think it would be the dance marathon. Oh, that is a favorite. That's so, a favorite everywhere. Yeah. So the dance <laughs> marathon, it, it all go all the money goes to Boston Children's Hospital. Mm -hmm. And so basically people literally start dancing for is it twelve hours, twenty four? I think it's twenty four hours. Yeah, for twenty four hours. Yeah. And it's like to see how like how much you can last and then you like start raising money and people get so into it. And it's like that one weekend that like school lets you like that they're like, okay, let's all pull a night all nighter like today. <laughs> they encourage it that day. So I really like that. That's great. Have you done it all for all two years? Well, Does it hasn't happen? happened this year. Oh, not yet. But last year, yes. Gotcha. So that's actually an upcoming event. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Um, are you involved in any clubs on campus? Um, the EC Global. So like answering your emails. Oh, that's right. Anyone who has <laughs> an email or a question or wants to talk to one of our international students. This is one of our EC Global team members, and she is there to answer them for you. Yes. What kinds of things are you guys doing with the EC Global team? So basically, we're trying to connect with international students. And because I know I really liked that when I got to Emmanuel. So like trying to make them feel at home, showing them that we are international students here, and we do like it. And answering any questions you guys have, because I had like a thousand questions. <laughs> so I don't think you're alone. I feel like everyone has a billion yeah. questions. It's the first time you're doing this, um, you know, and it's nice to have some guidance, especially from someone like you who has gone through this already. Yeah. You know, a lot of uh, students living abroad don't have what's called orientation. Uh, their colleges don't require that. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about what orientation was like? Yeah, sure. So orientation here is a little bit different because it's so small because so people do just for a weekend so um we go to the august one and it's really just like getting to know each other making your first friend on campus um you do get to know like some rules like don't drink on campus or <laughs> don't like throw your cigar away like here <laughs> just like basic knowledge that you should already know but they like try to emphasize it you get to find out how to um, apply for a job on campus um, you get your four-year plan you get a lot of advising so then you don't go into your first day and you're like what am I doing here <laughs> like why did I even come I have no idea where I'm going right so you get a lot of advising and you get a lot of like fun activities like they make a whole fair, they like hire like artists to like do like graffiti paint. It's really fun. I remember those. Those are really fun. They're really cute. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, one of our international students asked whether or not you can have a job on campus. So I know you have one yeah. and I enjoy working with <laughs> you. So I was hoping you could talk a little bit about yeah, sure. what it's like to have a job on campus. Was the process hard? Is right. there anyone to help you? Yeah. So the process is a little bit harder than usual because we're not citizens, or most of us, I don't know how many you guys are, but I'm not a citizen. So you do have to go through a longer process. So you apply like a normal citizen. So you send your resume, you like write up a resume, you send it to the career center and they approve it. And if they say no, like you have to redo it. But they'll like, give, they'll tell you reasons why they said no. So then when the career center approves it, like they don't want you to send a bad resume out to get a job. So then you send your resume out, you get like an interview or whatever the process is, and then your um, your new boss has to send a letter 
to the Social Security office and you do have to go get a Social Security number, which is great to do it your first year because it like opens up so many doors later, just having a Social Security number. So um, it's, a, it's a not a bad process. You only go once. The office is never really full. So it, and I like having a job on campus. I feel like you get to spend more time on campus. You get to do other things. Plus, you make money. So that's always <laughs> good. always important because you always, always want to go to the movies or eat at Panera. Boston is expensive. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, speaking of which, um, a lot of students usually are concerned about food. What is our food like? <laughs> do you enjoy it? <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Their food is good. Yes, it's good. So um, we have a lot of options. My favorite is their stir fry. So good. You get to make your a lot of your own things. So like you'll be like basically be pointing out like what to do, and they'll like make it for you. But their food is really good. We have two options. So we have the main dining hall, and we have like a cafe style, mm -hmm. which is like more like sure. yeah, like pick it up and like go, or like you're rushing to class, which is it's a lot quicker, and so that's nice. But the dining hall and the Muddy River are really good. I have to agree. I went there this afternoon and very much enjoyed it, as I always do. <laughs> the paninis. Oh, the, the southwestern turkey panini. So cold aioli. Perfect. So good. So I want to move into some other questions that some of our students were, were wondering. Um, and it's really more focused on Boston. And so one of our international students asked um, what your favorite thing to do is excuse me, what your favorite thing to do in Boston is? Oh my gosh, there's so much. Okay. <laughs> I know. So base, I think my favorite thing is just like getting on the tee, getting off at whatever stop and just like figuring out where you are because it's so pretty. Like you, you find something new every day. You never know all of Boston ever. And the public transportation is so convenient, so as easy. Camila said. I mean, oh you gosh. really, you're not going to have a car here. You won't need one. Mm -mm. And it's the Bostonian way. Take the public transportation. Um, you know, as I mentioned, Boston is a college city. So utilizing public transportation, which are the trains and the subway, underground subway, is very convenient. And it's it was it's made for college students. Yeah. So very easy. I take it every day. I like it. And the the train station closest to Emmanuel is literally maybe a six minute walk. Even less. Yeah, very close by. So it's very convenient. Yeah. Um, another student asked um, whether or not you live on campus or if you have an apartment and what living in the city is like. So I did live on campus my first year. I completely 1000% recommend it. Living on campus your first year is a must, but I did move off campus my second year just because I kind of wanted to like explore the city more mm -hmm. and just like kind of get to know places outside of Fenway and outside of like Newberry Street and things like that. And I like living off campus. I do miss Emmanuel a lot. Like mm -hmm. sometimes it's just so convenient, like having a dining hall right across mm -hmm. across your dorm. And so that's really easy or not having to wake up like an hour and a half before class and just waking up like 40 minutes before. So it's very convenient living on campus, but I do like living off campus. It's just a lot more work. And with regards to Boston, um, would you say that you feel it's a safe city? I know that it can Absolutely. be kind of scary if you're coming overseas, but I, I think a lot of international students are interested to know whether or not, you know, you feel like it's some it's a walkable city. Definitely. Also, I feel like internet, like if, from Central America, like we know danger, and so <laughs> this is not this is this is really safe. Boston is super safe. Also, if anything happens, like remotely, like even like just like a twenty dollar bill gets stolen, like Boston police will immediately call Emmanuel. Emmanuel will send a text message to alert everybody, a text message and an email sometimes to alert everybody that something happened. Just to like beware, like maybe don't like take that street tonight. Mm -hmm. But it's super safe, super, super safe. I've never had an issue, and I walk home every night. Never, ever had an issue. Great. Thank you. Um, I want to move now more towards the the international-related visa questions, and I think there's a lot of concern about that. Um, I'm curious to know how you felt the, the visa process went, that, obtaining the F-1 visa, and if you had any recommendations for our students. So the F-1 visa is a little bit of a long process, especially because nobody really prepares you to what's going to happen, like what steps to take. 
So it's really like um, filling everything out and then like making an appointment with your embassy, with the US embassy there and like you have to pay something before you get an appointment. It's just, it's a long process, but it's once you do all the embassy thing, the visa comes real quick. It's not an issue. I did it in like two weeks, which is not bad. And you do have to like do the line in the embassy, which nobody likes, but that's part of it. Also, like you have an interview in the embassy, so do like be prepared. Like, what are you gonna study? Like, don't be like, uh, because that would that would set you back. And what about when you're on campus in terms of renewing your okay. visa? Are there is there any support? So the visa does last five years. So you get four years to be on school, and then you get an extra year. Like, suppose you're like looking for a job for a year, so then you get the visa for one more year. So um the services here for that are really good they send you emails they remind you like you have to come get your i-20 signed tomorrow because if not you can't leave the country or you can't get back in so they are very nice about that they like i wouldn't remember if they didn't tell me um they do print everything out for you so you never have to like be like printing out your own thing so they like print it out when you update your major they print it out again and so they do keep like they keep track of your I-20. They make sure you live on campus or you moved off campus. They have to know certain things about you, but they're very like they they want to know where you are and they want to make sure that they can help you in any way possible. So those services are amazing. I like them a lot. Another question that um, I have for you is what I think what kind of advice would you give international students who are unsure of whether or not they should take that leap and go to the United States for college? I think you should do it. Like, <laughs> when, are <Good> you ever, <laughs> when are you ever going to get an opportunity to just spend four years with, like, you don't have to have a job, just, like, studying and, you like, spending time in the States just, like, figuring out a city. When else are you going to have that opportunity when you're not going to be working, like, nine to five every day? It's, like, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And I have to say I agree. My last question is, what is your favorite part about Emmanuel College? And that's my question. <laughs> um, like in general or like yeah. educationally? Or like... I guess just in general. I like the size. Like I know I keep bringing that up, but yeah. I really like the size. Because that goes for like social life. That goes for school. Like I know my professors. My professors know me. That goes for really everything at Emmanuel. Also, like, if you don't like a small school, you can always, like, step outside of Boston. Like, outside school, you're in the middle of Boston. Yeah. There's, like, a million schools surrounding you. If you think, like, oh, like, I'm not going to have that many friends because it's so small, step outside. <laughs> There's so many. Excellent. Thank you so much, Camilla. Do you have any other tips, anything that you want to say to the students at home? Just pick the school that makes you feel comfortable. If you're uncomfortable your first year, that's going to go bad. So just pick the school that like makes you feel welcome and makes you feel at home. And that for me was Emmanuel. So perfect. Thank that's you it. so much. I really appreciate sure. you coming, Camila. Sure. I'm sure everyone at home is is so appreciative of all the information that you shared. And um, again, if anyone has any questions for Camila, if you want to just chat with her and say hi. I'm sure she would love to chat with you and make sure, sure you email ecglobal at emmanuel.edu. So thanks you, thank you sure. again. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye. So at this point, we're wrapping up our first webinar for all of the international students at home, wherever you may be. And I just want to say thank you once again for taking the time to listen to both Camila and I about what kinds of benefits that are available here. If you're thinking to yourself right now, gee, I, I really like everything I hear. I want to go and take the next step, but what is that? I would encourage you to visit. I know it's hard, but if you can do that, if you're able to, we have an accepted student day called EC Coming, and it is scheduled in April. You'll be getting more information on that soon, but I would highly encourage you to do that. If April is totally out of the opportunity, op, excuse me, out of um, the options for you, Anytime you can come to campus, we can schedule you an overnight, we can schedule you a tour, you can sit in on a class. We would love to have you come to campus and see all of the things that we were talking about during the webinar. Now, if you are thinking, okay, what 
should I do if I, I definitely want to come to Emmanuel College? What's my next step? Submit your enrollment deposit. That would be the next step. They're already starting to roll in. You have until May 1st, but you want to submit that enrollment deposit with your enrollment form. And um, for international students, you are not eligible for financial aid. So there's no FAFSA that you need to complete. It's just submitting the enrollment deposit. But of course, if you have questions about how to pay for your education here, you are always welcome to speak with one of our student financial service officers. And they can assist you with figuring out maybe putting you on a payment plan or something of that nature. Lastly, if you are definitely sure you want to come to Emmanuel, let me know because I, I would be so happy and thrilled to welcome you into our community and to become a member of the EC Saints. Um, I will be sending out a link tomorrow to our accepted student website. If you have any questions about the F-1 visa process, which you can start sending your application into me for your F-1 visa, then certainly let me know. But the accepted student website will have next steps on how to fill out the application, what documents you need, the bank statement information, the financial supporter information. All of those documents need to be submitted to me so that I can issue you your, your I-20 and then you can go to the embassy as Camila was mentioning and hopefully get your F-1 visa without a long line. Um, in addition, the website also has a spotlight for our international students. So you'll see Camila up there. You'll see uh, Sao Ling. I mentioned him during our inter the internship process. Um, Wee Chen, who does the research. Um, we also have Shane up there. And we have a number of other international students who are also part of the EC Global team. If you, again, want to email one of our students, ecglobal at emmanuel.edu is the way to go. But once again, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time to watch and listen and to hopefully be inspired to grow academically. If you have any questions moving forward, let me know. But hopefully the next time I hear from you, it will be to let me know that you are going to be joining us in the fall of 2016 and you have found your home, which hopefully will be Emmanuel College. So again, thanks so much. I'll see you next time. And good luck with the rest of your senior year. Bye.